<laughs> Anybody out there? That's probably not the way to start a chat. Can you guys hear me? Five people. Hey! J Hook. What's going on, guys? I figured I'd give this live streaming deal a shot. Uh, I wanted to do a video today and I didn't get to it. I figured this would be the next best thing that I could do today. Sorry for the mess that's right here. That's a project that's up and coming here pretty soon. I'm waiting on some parts for it. West Texas, what's up, man? Just got a new iPhone, so it's not new, but 7 Plus is new to me. <clears throat> So I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit tonight about stocking my 220 gallon aquarium bluegills. <laughs> You'll probably catch some of those. Good audio. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so first things first, if you guys have are new to Mad Hatter's Reef. Um, I'm the guy that works on the videos and I'm also the guy that works on the websites as well and the reason I started Mad Hatter's Reef was to help people out, help uh, people get into the hobby and uh, be successful because I started 10 years ago and it really wasn't the case back then and so I started sharing. This tank is uh, 220 gallons and the sump is just under 40 gallons so it's it's a good good size build that I'm working on um, so the reason I got into the got into YouTube and sharing videos on YouTube was to help people be more successful uh, this is my fifth tank um, my first tank was a 55 gallon I used to be into African cichlids uh, pretty heavily and made the jump to saltwater 10 years ago and ever since then you know I started sharing stuff on YouTube to help other people and that's why I started Mad Hatter's Reef and that's why I continue to work on Mad Hatter's Reef. I've been adjusting my uploading uh, quite a bit lately I've been trying to find the right mix. Thanks man. <laughs> yeah I should be sleeping too. I'm on vacation this week and I'm actually going um, bass fishing for most of the week so up here in Maine the water uh, just started to warm up so it should be getting pretty good here. Um, also work on videos for YouTube. So anyways for tonight I wanted to kind of talk about uh, my stalking plan and maybe get some suggestions from you folks as to what I should put in my tank. So I want to start off with very community um, based fish and kind of work myself up to the more um, hard to find fish down the road. Um, I'm going to be working with saltwaterfish.com on some videos and um, after that I'm going to get some fish and I'm working on a quarantine system right now that I should be releasing the video on Sunday. <laughs> you can come up if you can make it to Maine by 7 a.m. tomorrow. I'll take you fishing. Um, I also have a fishing uh, channel too if you guys want to check that out. I haven't put any videos on it yet. It's called Too Much Tackle. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out, there's nothing there yet, but eventually there'll be some videos there. Uh, but back to Mad Hatter's Reef. Um, 
so I'm, I'm thinking about starting off with clownfish. Uh, I want to get a uh, couple blennies, a couple gobies, and maybe some um, cardinal fish. Just some very basic fish to kind of get the community uh, going. Behind me, what you see right there, those are my two orange skunk clowns. Um, they were in quarantine and they actually had a bout of ick that we had to work through. Uh, but eventually, um, they were got a clean bill of health and got to go into the big tank. What I'm really trying to do with this system is try to avoid it. it the possibility of it happening is very real, but I'm trying to avoid um, diseases and stuff like that getting into the tank because eventually I want to have a couple tangs and tangs are very prone uh, to disease, very susceptible to disease. So I'm um, trying to keep the tank as clean as I possibly can. Uh, this Sunday I'm actually going to have a video, kicking the tripod, um, a video that I'm going to roll out to you guys is a quarantine system that I'm putting together which it's going to start off with housing uh, five 10 gallons that are going to feed into a 33 gallon and the drilling video that I put out uh, Friday, I think it was Friday last week, um, is kind of the precursor to that but I'll go into that build in a little bit more detail um, this Sunday coming. And I'm also going to be doing a video on a product review that I got in last week on some salt so we're gonna do that this Thursday so a couple videos coming um, here pretty soon so you guys have any thoughts as to what if you had a 220 gallon tank that barely had any fish in it whatsoever what kind of fish would you guys put in the tank You guys are getting quiet on me. You're pretty chatty there for a minute. Lionfish. It's probably the only fish I won't put in there. Eel. I. I would like to do, eel. I would like to do a predator tank down the road. Um, I don't have a lot of love for them, to be honest with you. So, yeah, snowflake eel. That's probably the one that I would do too. If I was gonna do. Um, a predator tank, I think I would go with a snowflake eel. Um, I struggle with that. I like community fish for the most part. 80 fish, nice. Um, for the most part, I like the community fish. I actually like small, even though I have a very big tank that I'm working on. I like very small fish for some reason. Um, maybe because it gives you the illusion of a reef flame angel definitely flame angel going in the tank yep definitely a flame angel that's going to be probably because i'm going to do the first uh order of fish is going to be very small um very small fish very calm fish peaceful and i'm going to slowly work my way up to the more six line wrasse no way i will never put a six line wrasse in the tank ever again they're bullies man hardcore Hippo tang. I've had a hippo tang before. I've also had a powder blue. I really clown trigger. No. I think another tank that would look pretty cool. Eventually, I have my 90 gallon. That was my middle tank. Um, I think I'd like to do a um, angel tank. down the road. I think that'd be pretty, pretty solid. Um, so with this order, one of the fish, I think the, the big, the big fish that I'm going to be getting in this order is going to be a premium, uh, snowflake grade A. And I wish I could kind of do a screenshot and kind of show you some of the fish that, you know, over, do like overlays. That'd be kind of a neat, neat feature if that ever were to happen here with this streaming stuff um, but I'd like to do a, a pair of the premium snowflakes um, I think those are going to be the big the big ticket item on this order and then I, I'm going to get four of the firefish gobies um, they're known jumpers but they're very peaceful fish again and 
I had one in my nano tank, um, but he he did some free willy action. Um, Emperor Angel, yeah, that's a beautiful fish, at least when they're young. Um, I had a uh, what is it? Hyphen, hyphen goby, and it jumped out of the tank. Um, I ended up replacing him with a Watchman goby in the nano tank, but. Uh, I'd like to get another one of those, and I had a trigger, trigger a uh, pistol shrimp with them, and the pistol shrimp ended up killing the uh, cleaner shrimp that I had in there, which I didn't realize that that was a thing, but that that happened. Um, speaking of the nano reef tank, I haven't done an update on that in a while now. I actually had a pretty crappy thing happen with that. Um, the heater in it died and ended up uh, killing off probably half the corals that I had in the tank. I didn't realize it soon enough. Um, I think the, that thing's been doomed. I've had a leak in it this year. Yeah, it's free willy. Um, I had a leak in it this year, so I threw everything into a 10 gallon tank, which actually should be a part of the uh, quarantine system that I got going. Moved everything, I just made it by the skin of my teeth on that one. And then the heater crapped out on me and lost half the corals in there. The, the lights on this tank here are no name LEDs that you could probably get on eBay for I think what are they, 80 bucks a shot. Um, this one in the middle, I actually bought that from a guy on um, a Facebook group that I put together because all the businesses when the recession hit um, closed up so we were kind of all supporting each other um, that one doesn't have any lenses on it so it seems a little bit different than this one but they're all pretty much the same thing I don't know what that last comment was lost it they're cheapos I think eventually I'll go with radons um, but at, for right now, I don't have any coral in the tank. I'm going to be stalking all the fish and then eventually getting into the corals if I don't have to move the corals that have survived from the nano reef into this tank. Um, but I just assume not to because I've had some pretty crappy stuff going on in there. Thanks for the tattoo. That's old scar from when I was a younger, younger version of me. Um... So I think that's what I'm going to be starting off with. Um, I'll probably look back through. You like the T5s better? I I was actually thinking about going with the radons. I'm getting into equipment now, but I guess that's the good thing about streaming. I I can't remember what this what it's called. The Rife Rife Reef Bright Reef Bright. I think is what it's called. Um, I saw a video, it was on Mel, uh, Mark Levingston's channel, um, the guy, he actually, I think Mark has them on his tank, uh, it's an LED tube that runs across, and um, I'd like to run some of those, if not T5s on the tank, but they're pretty, those ones that Mark is working with are pretty expensive, so, um, this lighting is for now. It came. I actually bought. I did a video not that long ago about the cost of the tank overall. Um, I bought this tank 500 bucks used. It does have a couple scratches here and there, um, but for the most part, I thought it was a pretty solid deal. Um, the lights came with the tank, so that kind of sweetened that deal. Uh, it also came with the heater that I'm running on the tank. And what else? It came with the overflow. This tank isn't uh, drilled, so it came with the overflow. Um, other than that, I've kind of pieced together a lot of the equipment. Um, I have an apex on it. So it is reef, reef bright. All right, yep. You, that's cool. You have it. Yep. I think that. I think I'd like to do. One, I'm gonna build this out so you don't see the lights eventually. This whole, I have a whole canopy thing that I eventually, once I get that finished, I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, but I'm gonna build the canopy out so it goes flush with the tank about the same, same time that I finish uh, the stand. But as far as for equipment right now, 
uh, running an apex, running wave, power heads. Um, I haven't used that light for nano reefs. Um, I have, uh, you can't see it, barely see it right there, a um, Ecotech MP40 right there. Um, I have uh, Vectra return pump. I have a uh, Aquamax Cone SQ3 protein skimmer. They're not in quarantine yet. I'm putting the order together uh, in the next week. I actually talked to the guy uh, that owns Saltwater Fish today and I'm going to be putting the order together this week and getting that up here. It's not as... It, Joe, it can be as uh, crazy as you want to make it as far as the coating with the apex and all that stuff. Eventually, I have a couple videos, um, if you dig down deep a little bit, uh, on setting up the apex, setting up the wave. I just got the dose and DDR set up. I, what else I got? I think that's it for now. Um, I did talk with Terrence not that long ago, and hopefully I'm gonna be getting some more equipment to throw on here and that's going to be coming in. I was thinking about doing, actually I actually have a couple of videos on the back burner right now to kind of help people through the process because I was a little overwhelmed when I got it and I'm not the most tech savvy guy out there. Um, I'm not a complete idiot either, but um, it, it even the littlest things you can get kind of hung up on. So I, I'm running the Neptune Systems waves. I have them. I have one right there, and there's one on this side, and then I have the MP40 in the middle. Um, I think eventually I'd like to get when I start getting into the SPS corals. I'd like to have two MP40s on the back wall, if not going completely with waves. I like the control, especially with having an apex already. I like the control with the waves, and eventually I'm going to be doing a video on that. I'm not a fish guy, um, as odd as that is, I'm more of a coral guy. I think eventually, depends on the size really, but I think eventually I'm going to get to uh, maybe 30 fish in there. Uh, Apex, I, have, I honestly I don't have experience with other controllers, so that wouldn't be fair to compare it to the apex but the more the more involved that I get with the apex the more I dig into it the more I'm falling in love with it and I was excited when I got it but I'm even more excited with every piece of equipment I get and how more simple it makes having a saltwater aquarium and I was kind of leading to that with my nano reef tank my nano reef tank has gone through hell this year and I wouldn't have the problems that I have had if I had an Apex on it, even an Apex Junior. If I had a uh, the leak, would have been I would have been notified of that via text message with the phone. Um, I, when the heater crashed, I would have known that when that happened, and it would have been two days before I went and realized that you know the corals were turning brown and then some of them losing flesh. Um, it really, when you get involved in this tank right now, I have, I, I think it was like four grand tied up into this tank. Um, and that's not even starting, that's two fish in there. Um, that's not even starting to get into it. So when, when you talk, you know, a couple grand in livestock, and then I'm a coral guy, so I'm gonna go crazy with that. Um, there's a lot of money involved in a apex for me is a very small uh, insurance policy so in the grand scheme of things they, they cost 800 bucks but that's nothing in comparison to what I have in to this already so I love I love the hobby um, I'm gonna be doing a video probably 
this coming weekend and I'll release it next week on how I kind of got into the hobby and how I've gotten to this point because uh, I've had fish tanks my whole entire life and I've only been in saltwater tanks for the last 10 years um, but I've done all sorts of stuff in my basements uh, a hobbyist uh, good dream so um, I don't really get into that too much anymore but eventually uh, we'll start digging into that too and this quarantine tank setup that I'm going to be releasing the video on Sunday about that um, sand bed on this one's not that deep and I still have the bald spot right here that I did a video on um, talking about how to add sand to the tank I think it's it's just barely above the plastic rim that runs a, runs around the tank so probably two inches sand uh, I've gone back and forth. I was a deep sand bed guy for a long time, and then um, the Nano Reef doesn't have any sand in it, and I, I keep going back and forth. But uh, it's more of an aesthetic, really. It's not it's not a necessary thing to have a successful saltwater tank. So, all right, guys. So I'm pushing past the 20 minute mark. Um, so I want to thank you guys for spending some time with me tonight. I appreciate your comments and um, if this is something that you guys want to see more of um, hit the thumbs up button and if you are not a subscriber Mad Hatter's Reef hit that subscribe button and hit the bell because with the streaming stuff you'll be notified of when I go live so the next time that I'm up and running uh, you guys will get notification on that um, I appreciate you guys appreciate you guys time and I'll see you right here with a brand new stream take care guys